This month alone, you've probably heard the word microtransactions on a number of occasions. And we're not talking about the mobile free-to-play games like Clash of Clans. No, we're talking about the standard AAA titles on Sony and Microsoft consoles that can cost you as much as £60 sterling. So how did it all start? It's no surprise that back in 2001, the company to offer downloadable content was Microsoft, with the advent of the original Xbox. Games like Splinter Cell and Ninja Gaiden offered extra content for free, while Microsoft published titles like Halo 2 came at a cost downloaded via their unique Xbox Live service. But microtransactions aren't anything new. They were tried and tested as early as 2006 on the Xbox 360. I mean, who could forget the 200 Microsoft points it would cost to add armour to your horse in Elder Scrolls Oblivion? The response was overwhelmingly negative. More and more downloadable content now known as DLC would be available to the gamer. Some gamers would argue that the DLC in short should have been available in what was already a costly purchase in the first place, while others would be happy to pay extra for game content supporting the longevity of the title. But this wasn't an easy sell to gamers. In fact, there was a lot of negativity against practices like this. As the gaming community complained, it was another way for developers to further monetize on their games. As gamers, we sucked it up and moved with the majority, accepting downloadable content was a major part of AAA releases. Now, as a gamer, I'm not against DLC. I'm happy to support a developer, as we all know the cost of making games now runs into the millions. But as long as the DLC is what it should be, an extension to the game and not something that was an add-on to an unfinished product, or found on the actual game disc. So as the community start to accept the new business model, another big gaming phenomenon appeared in the shape of mobile gaming. This phenomenon then moved to the tablet market, but by then game developers were searching ways in which to monetize their games further. In doing so, the mobile business model changed. Instead of games costing you a one-off price, they would offer you the game for free, now known as free to play, with the ability to help you progress further in the shape of in-app purchases. Again, the transition was something of a nasty surprise, especially with early adopters paying full price for a mobile game only to find the title updated on your phone or tablet, subjecting you to the same free-to-play model despite having paid full price originally. But developers have found the free-to-play market a dominant one. It's where they can further monetize by making games with in-app purchases which we all have come to know as microtransactions. You only have to look at the success of Candy Crush and Clash of Clans to prove such a popular business model works. With mobile developers making a lot of money, it wasn't a surprise when publishers like EA experimented using microtransactions in full price console games like Mass Effect 3 and Dead Space 3. This of course had heated backlash which saw the company voted the worst two years in a row. Even some PC titles like Diablo 3 with its push for pay to win received such negativity Blizzard axed real and in-game money systems. But it wasn't until the release of the new Xbox One and PlayStation 4 that a handful of new-gen games like Forza and Rise Son of Rome were designed with deep-rooted microtransaction models that gamers felt interfered with the game's core experience. For me, this trend has now picked up pace. Look at Konami's Metal Gear Online. You pay real money as insurance to prevent your bases from getting destroyed by online enemy attacks, which I hasten to add is completely unavoidable. We also recently learnt Bungie now has its own microtransaction store in Destiny, where you can buy emotes and dance to Carlton. Seems harmless enough, after all these are purchases that don't affect that important gameplay core experience. But lo and behold a discovery was found in the code, regarding game content not yet available. Stuff that boosts raid drops, levels up subclasses etc. Now in Bungie's defence they were very quick to deny this and other rumours, but I've heard developers play that tune before. Which brings me to Overkill's Payday 2 on PC. Now not only was this a full price title, but Overkill had been adding DLC for the past couple of years, and at the time was a respected developer in the PC community. When asked if microtransactions will ever be introduced, producer Alma Listo responded in 2013 that Payday 2 will have no microtransactions whatsoever. Shame on you if you thought otherwise. Turns out Listo is a fucking liar. Overkill shattered that illusion and any trust they gained by releasing a black market update. This allowed players to crack open safes to claim loot drops by purchasing an in-game drill. Adding insult to injury, they introduced the Crime Fest event as a gift. 
Great fucking gift overkill. If this pure marketing genius has shown anything, it is the senseless disrespect towards the players, the players that have made Payday 2 the successful title it once was. But this also shows a further worrying trend. Older games that you've invested time in and purchased DLC for can then be monetized further with microtransactions using a free to play model. Or purchased at a knockdown discount similar to what Overkill have done with Payday 2. But how many other games will follow suit? But this is only the start. Unfortunately this won't be the first or last developer or publisher to introduce such greedy tactics. Upcoming titles like the new Tomb Raider from Crystal Dynamics will empower you with microtransactions as will Halo 5. At the moment it only seems to be the core online play that is affected by this, but how long will it take before the single player campaign sits behind a paywall? So how deep a cut have microtransactions got in the gaming world? Well enough for it not to stop bleeding. I mean you only have to look at the state of mobile gaming to see how close we are to repeating it. And let me point out, no game, new or old, or on any format is safe. If developers and publishers decide to monetize their games further, it's simply now done with a patch update. I mean changing a business model within a console and PC community where the hardware alone is highly priced will likely hurt consumer confidence and trust in publishers. But the new generation gamer who have moved from the free to play model on mobiles won't think twice purchasing microtransactions on their brand new console. After all they know no different and that's exactly what the gaming industry is counting on. The line is simple, if we accept that microtransactions are the future and the norm, then what we loved about the core gaming experience will slowly die as the business model gets more aggressive. But as consumers we can demand respect from the greedy games companies and the tirade that is microtransactions. But if all else fails we do have the last word, and it's with our wallets. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm Grayson Steele. Thanks for watching. Until next time.